Hey guys, my name is David and welcome back to the Bush Plane Build Series where we build out this Avid Flyer Mark IV. In today's video, we are going to build some custom door handles out of forge carbon. I'll show you my design process for how I design the handles, how I design the molds, we'll 3D print those, and then we'll actually lay up the carbon fiber as well. So let's get started. Welcome to Let's Build This. My name is David and I love to design, build, and fly. Join me as we discover those three areas and more. So whenever designing any parts, I always start with pen and paper. I sketch out some ideas. I try to figure out how do I want this to look? What shape should it have? And then I take those designs and I move them into Fusion 360 and I start to sketch out the part as a 3D model. Once I've got that all shaped out the way I want it, I then form a box around it and I start to cut out the parts of it and build the negative cavity of the mold. I then add in all the part lines so that the mold can split apart. I add in any drafts if they're needed. I add these chamfers to the edges of the molds where they mate together so I have a place to split them apart. I then export each part as an STL file so that I can 3D print them. I then bring them into my slicing software that's specific for my 3D printer so it may look different than what you have. I then orient all my parts, I select all the settings I want, and then I export that as a G-code file so I can print it. I then get that file started on the printer, I print the parts, they come out. So the first thing we want to do when we take this mold off the printer is it's going to have just a tiny bit of flashing that happens right along the edge where it touches the printer. And we actually need to remove that, otherwise these parts, they don't quite mate together exactly the way they need to. And so if all you have is a razor blade, you can do that and just, you know, be careful and just kind of drag that along the bottom edge and just take that off. Alternatively, you can buy one of these deburring tools, which is really great. It's got kind of this uh, swivel to it. And so it kind of just stays in the right angle as it goes. And then you can basically just drag that along and scrape off that little bit of edge there. And then that's going to get it all prepped. So these two parts will come together and they'll press together nicely. Now this mold is a three piece design. The reason I did this is because I put no draft angle on this part here. And so once I were to take this off, I wouldn't be able to get this piece out of here. And so I split that into two parts. I just went into Fusion 360 and I just drew a line along here. And then I split that into two parts and printed it that way. I also chamfered the edges here. So that way, as we're demolding this part, if it gets stuck for any reason, it should come apart on its own naturally, but if it doesn't, you can use a screwdriver or something to pry that apart. So that's why I designed it this way. I also designed this so that this part is a little bit taller than what my actual part is. And the reason for that is that this piece here is going to go down. This is the piston. And so once you pack that full of the carbon and the epoxy, you're going to actually press this down in there. You want to press it together slowly. This will just come down just a little bit. And so you can see that that will then end up putting pressure on the part and squeezing it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do once I get those molds all prepped is I'm going to bolt these together. I'm using this PVA mold release. It's compatible for epoxy or fiberglass. And this one we just brush on. I just use the cheapo brush for this. Make sure everything's nice and coated. Now this takes about 15 to 45 minutes to dry. It's best if you apply multiple coats to get a nice glossy finish. All right, did you catch the mistake here? If not, we'll talk about it in a moment. Now the brush that I use for the wet up, I actually like to trim it so that the bristles are nice and stiff. I had this leftover piece of carbon fiber that was just ready for a project. I chopped it all up at a 45 degree angle to make my carbon fiber toe making sure there were no pieces longer than 15 millimeters. All right, be sure to wear safety gear while doing this. I always wear safety glasses, gloves, and a respirator. This is a nice compact one that I use. It actually fits under my welding helmet, which is great. And so just protect yourself as you work on these projects. Now it's time to mix up our epoxy. I just used a simple two-part epoxy off of Amazon. Since these are prototypes, I just bought some cheap epoxy. I didn't want to burn through the nice stuff on the first prototypes. So mix this up really well and be sure to scrape the sides. Then it's the fun game of brushing and stuffing. You're going to want to have a ratio of about 60% carbon to 40% epoxy. 
This part is a little bit messy, but you can keep working that carbon fiber into the mold. Be sure to clean up all the edges and stuff everything into the mold before you put the top on. Now when you put this in the vise, be sure to squeeze it slowly so the epoxy has time to run out. All right, it's been about eight hours, so let's demold this. All right, you guys ready to learn a lesson? <laughs> Looks like they got glued together while I did this. Should have thought of that. Okay, there it was. That wasn't too bad. That gives me promise that I'll probably be able to demold the rest of the part because if you didn't catch it when I was putting the mold release on, I didn't put it around the outer perimeter of where the parts or where the molds actually touch each other. And so this may be a little bit of a challenge getting them apart, but we'll see how it goes. All right, to no avail, this one's glued in there. I'm sure I'll be able to get it out somehow, but uh, this one, I'm gonna move on and actually just demold this one instead. I'm able to get all three of these off and it doesn't look like there was any glue on either side of these, except with the exception of just right there. So this one should come apart. Looks like we were able to get that part out. It looks like it separated the layers here. So anytime with these molds, you really have to treat them as throwaways for even every single part. If you can get multiple runs out of it, that's great. I could just reprint just this part and reuse it. All right, so we've got a little bit of flashing in there. You can see kind of how that was all set up. So now, All right, that looks promising. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Ooh. All right, so we still are stuck there a little bit. It also looks like some of that carbon didn't quite get wet up very well right there. But yeah, I mean that, I mean that part like that looks like a 3D printed part. So one thing you can do on these is you can actually put an ejector pin, which would just be a hole on this side, and then you could push you know, a bolt or something through there to kind of push this part out. So I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can find a way to pry this out. There we go. We have a solid carbon fiber part here. I mean, this feels pretty solid. There's definitely some cleanup to do here, but I'm pretty stoked about that. All right, so let's clean some of this up. This wasn't too bad to get all the flashing off of there, but it did take a few minutes. It is amazing how much that looks like a 3D printed part. All right, I would say that this is success. When it first came out of the mold, there was all the flashing and you could see all the print lines and everything. And I was like, ooh, maybe this isn't quite working out as well as I thought. But once I cleaned up all the flashing and I sanded this, I'm actually really impressed with how this looks overall. There is a little bit of pitting on the backside and whatnot, but all of that could be cleaned up. I'm gonna get this mounted with the other parts. I've gotta make the outer door handle and then I've gotta make the mounting bracket as well. So I'm probably gonna make some adjustments to this anyway. I also plan on the mold. This one's not reusable. So I actually plan on designing a new mold anyway. I'm gonna add a, just a little bit of draft angle in there. And then I'll probably put an ejector pin over on this side here where the handle piece is, just so that is a little bit easier to take it out of the mold. All right, so this is just a quick mock-up, but I wanna show you how this will function inside the airplane. So I've got this little mounting tab right here. I was planning on cutting it off, but I could actually use it to mount the bracket that will hold this in place. There'll be a pin that will go through the door and then we'll connect to the outer latch. And so from the outside, I'll be able to turn this and then that will open up and the door can open. And then as you get in the airplane, you can close this by pulling that latch down. And so it should be very simple to use. I'm thinking about adding a catch here to this lower piece so that as the latch rotates in place, it will hold itself in place so you don't just easily pop the door out. 
Other than that, I uh, generally like the look of the matte finish on these. I am gonna clear coat it just to see how this looks. But honestly, for my first forged carbon parts, I'm super happy with this. This is very promising. And this is definitely not the end of what you're gonna see with these here. So I'm definitely gonna continue to learn from this and keep trying more parts. So if you're looking for more of that content or other videos on the airplane, go ahead and check them out. They'll be linked up here. And until next one, we'll catch you later.